Thank you. Thank you, Michael, and thank you all. I'm very honored to be here. I'm chuffed, as the British say. Any Brits here? Seven. Excellent. I'm also an idiot savant. Uh, well, <laughs> which is why I'm really here. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm an actor slash impressionist, and uh, you know I've been an actor for a long time. I'm the son of actress Marion Ross of Happy Days, which I thought I'd get that out of the way, you know. So uh, raised by an iconic mother, not so bad, and uh, I learned a lot about professionalism from her, which I hope I'll remember uh, today. But anyway, uh, growing up, anyway, in that household, uh, my mother was uh, well, a wonderful actress, and she would also point out voices to me and. Uh, and uh, she was very good mimic herself, and so it was kind of coin of the realm at my house anyway to to be able to do characters and voices. It was perfectly acceptable, perfectly natural. I grew up thinking everybody grew up in a house like that where you would imitate people, and uh, and I, I grew up really kind of uh, not really thinking too much about the skill that I had, which I should demonstrate. Actually, I, I realize at this point because I'm talking about something that's I'm not really showing you. So the best way I've, I've found so far to do it quickly and give you a large variety of voices by doing the celebrity alphabet. A is for Arnold, of Austrian birth, who pumped up his ambition for all it was worth. B is for Bond, James Bond, famously played first by Sean Connery, and now Daniel Craig. <laughs> C is for George Clooney, the world's handsomest man, and a fair substitute for the late Cary Grant. D is for Matt Damon, and I don't want to sound gloomy, but how come I always got to go after George Clooney? E is for Eastwood, great director and actor, who looks like he could bite the tires off a tractor. <laughs> F is for Craig Ferguson, talented Scott, who's great when he's on script. Even better when not. I know. G is for Alec Guinness, from across the pond, whom Star Wars nerds know solely as Obi-Wan. H is for Ron Howard, uh, who's so good that it's scary. And thank God he broke free of his roots from Mayberry. I is for Eddie Izzard, who dresses so chic and whose comedy is, well, très, très magnifique. J is for Jack, the star with an attitude for which he has earned all impressionists' gratitude. <laughs> K is for Kevin Spacey, a guy who the term warm and fuzzy will never apply to. <laughs> L is for Lindsay Lohan, who still gets role offers. I can't do her voice, so this is her parole officers. <laughs> is for Malkovich, who, <laughs> when he's enraged, has the best diction of any since Geraldine Page. N is for Liam Neeson, the Schindler's List star, who still owed an Oscar for playing Oscar. O is for O'Reilly, argumentative Bill, who craves controversy like a whale sucks up krill. P is for Ron Paul, wh whom the press seems to hate. <laughs> but according to polls, he won every debate. <laughs> Q is for Quentin Tarantino, okay, whose films totally rule. I mean, can anything beat Kill Bill 1 and Part 2? R is for Reagan, whom you will recall told Mikhail Gorbachev to, well, Tear down that wall. <laughs> S is for Sting, who once sang to Roxanne, and then garnered more fame as an ex-policeman. T is for Tommy Lee Jones, whom we know ran out of patience a long, long time ago. <laughs> U is for Unger, the great Tony Randall, to whom TV stars now can't hold an unscented candle. V is for Vincent Price, whose spooky demeanor was less of a monster and more old antique dealer. W is for W. <laughs> 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 
former White House resident <laughs> who used to be known as President of the United States. <laughs> X is for Xavier of the X-Men film saga. Patrick Stewart portrayed the non-magnetic doctor. Y is for Yusuf. Cat Stevens was his name. Till he turned his back on materialist fame. Z is for the end. For everything halts, including our closer, uh, the great Christoph Waltz. That's your A to Z. Thank you. Thank you. I get through a bunch of them real fast. Well, I, you know, I wanted to tell you something, I don't know, very personal and, uh, and rather unrehearsed, really. But I, when I started doing these impressions, it was mainly just to attract attention to myself and get some work and uh, I'm an actor but I don't really particularly stand out as an actor I, you know I've, I've made my peace with that almost and uh, you know I've, I've been in a few films and it just never catches fire but I notice that in my life when I do haul out the impressions which to me are like no big deal when I haul that out it creates change in my career and people go whoa whoa and I realize people are just inherently interested in impressionists and I know when I was a kid growing up and watched Rich Little and Fred Travelina and, and the, the greats uh, Frank Gorshin, you know, these guys. I was just drawn to it, like, oh, of course. This is magnificent. This is a man imitating other men. This is the greatest thing in the world. You know, I didn't watch football. <laughs> I watched, but I could have watched, you know, if they had the Impressions channel, I would have watched that all day. So, and, and as I've grown older, I've noticed that just people really respond to it, and, I, and I, it just scratch, I scratch my head over it, because why is it so intoxicating and interesting? And I'm sure everybody's got their own opinion about it. But what I've come up with is that I think it has to do with very basic questions of identity. You know, like, you know, we all kind of wonder at one point in our lives, or at multiple points in our lives, who the hell we are. And when you see another person who can just shift and be other people, like when we see a great actress or great actor and they suddenly are like a completely different person, like Brad Pitt becomes a completely different person or Kate Winslet or Meryl Streep, perfect example. It's just fascinating because you go, How, wait, wait, is that legal? Can we, we're, we're allowed to change and be other people? And I realized that that's a very therapeutic thing in a way. Uh, it seems to be, it is for me, to watch other people change who they are. Uh, because, you know, mostly things seem to be militating towards us just being one thing in one place. Have you noticed that? You know, and, uh, you know, there's all kinds of conspiracy theories about that, which I won't. I don't have any slides for. I wish I did. Oh, hi, how are you? So, anyway, that's, you know, that's my attempt to try to understand this whole thing. And I noticed that the human voice is, of course, an aspect of a personality. It's, it's a symbol. It's a sample of a person. It's, it's one channel that we share with other people. You know, we have all kinds of data about ourselves. We don't introduce ourselves with our blood type. We say, hi, how are you? And we already, people know from your voice. If someone says, hi, how are you? We know, yeah, I don't know. Is this the person I want to talk to? <laughs> you know, talking about the data about kissing and stuff and, you know, what do you prefer and stuff. I, you know, I was very sensitive to voices of the women that I dated, you know? And if someone is like, hi, how are you? I, I don't know, that's, maybe it's a prejudice with me and it's probably a cultural thing. There's probably some country where if you talk, I guess, up in your nose, it's perfect. It's the sexiest, most desirable thing in the world, but <laughs> for me growing up, it wasn't quite that way. So uh, I have my wife, Tamara, who's in the audience, has a beautiful voice. It's just gorgeous, it's just so nice, just the way I like it. But we all, don't we kind of, I mean, take a look at this. This is just something I could share with you. When you talk, I mean, don't we try to get away with as little as possible in terms of modulation and musicality in our voice? Don't we spend all day kind of going, yeah, no, that's great. Put it over there. That's fine. Thanks a lot. You know, it's kind of like, you know. Oh, great. Hey, it's terrific to see you again. Hey, how are you? You know, special events maybe like, oh, dude, hey, how are you? Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. No, no, don't, don't, don't put that there. Put it over here. Yeah. Yeah, great. No, how are you? I'm fine. How was your weekend? It was great. Okay, was you know, we're kind of like... Me meanwhile, we have a violin in the voice that we can do all kinds of things with. We can deepen it, make it rich. You know, when you meet people that are trained in opera, don't they sound just a little more interesting? I had an uncle once who was a radio guy, and uh, he would talk like this all the time. 
He could, you know. After you got used to it, it was, it was pretty okay. You always knew what he thought. And you always knew when the station break was. <laughs> but um, I think that, um, I don't know, there's a lot of musicality to our voices that we can bring and a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, information that we share with one another You're just through our voice, you know, the friendliness. You know, there's that, te- that instant when you know this person is not going to be helpful. <laughs> what can I do for you? You know, just we get that. We get a lot of messages under the surface or behind the scenes uh, from our voices and stuff. And so it tickles me. It interests me. And I love accents and dialects and stuff like that. So I put up a YouTube video uh, to promote my, my whole one-man show, which is called Jim Impressions, which I was doing in Hollywood and traveled around with a little bit. I'm going to continue to travel with it. And to promote the show, I thought, well, I'll do this thing that I've, uh, you know, I've done for years, which is uh, Shakespeare and celebrity voices. I'll do that. You know, and I'll put that up on YouTube. What the heck? And uh, it was very exciting because it was my first viral hit on my own. I'd, I'd been involved in some viral hits. The Jib Jab, Jib Jab Media was here uh, a few years ago, and they did this land. And I did this land is your land. This land is my land. I'm a Texas Tiger. You're a liberal wiener. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> Thank you. He's no longer president. Cause for celebration, yes, and uh, so, I, you know, I, anyway, so I did this little YouTube video, and I put it online, and, you know, it's just the magic story of, like, you think, wow, mo- normally my videos get, like, 800 views, 600, ooh, that's great, 600 people, my God, if was, this room has 600 people, it's exciting. Then I went to see Eddie Izzard at the Hollywood Bowl, and the Hollywood Bowl seats 17,000 people. He's doing stand-up comedy at the Hollywood Bowl, and I looked around, and I went, that's about right, that sounds about right. I'd like to do stand-up comedy or impression for 17,000 people. Anyway, I went home that night, 17,000 views. Magic? Or the internet? I don't know. Anyway, it was very exciting. So, and now it's up to almost 800,000. Hope to get, to get it up to, you know, 10 million this weekend. <laughs> Just being very conservative about that. But um, anyway, it's a fun bit to do, and I thought I would do it live for you now, if you'd like that. Thank you. And this is where Mr. Hawley can help us out. And uh, yeah, and don't worry, you're empty-handed, but that's only momentaneously. I'm looking now for the slide, and the slide is not coming up. There we are. No, that's not it. I need that one that I, with all the names on it. That's it. So I do an infinity of voices, but this is a selection for you, especially handcrafted. And I'm going to do Clarence's Dream from Richard III. And what we're going to do here, Michael, you can see that okay? Mm-hmm. Can you read those okay? Oh, yes. Would you rather be over here? No, 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 that's okay. You're all right there? I'm good. So what I'm going to do, you're going to be in charge of picking them one by one. And you, uh, you have a mic, but what I'd like you to do is wait for me to go like this. Okay. And then I can control a little bit. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I have to hypnotize you. Okay. Please don't, don't want to do that. Do, don't <laughs> do. So give me one to get started. Ben Crosby. Good. And when you say it, and just I, not, not to... Just, just to direct you a little bit. Punch it out, because they might be laughing. Possibility, they might be laughing. Bing Crosby. That's it. Oh, I've passed a miserable night. So full of fearful dreams and awful sights that as I'm a Christian faithful man, I would not spend another such night though were to buy a world of happy days. George Clooney. We thought that I had broken from the tower and was embarked to cross to Burgundy. Ted Koppel. And in my company, my brother Gloucester, who from my cabin tempted me to walk upon the hatches. Don Pardo. Hence we look toward England. (laughs) And conjured up a thousand heavy times during the wars of York and Lancaster that had befallen us. Craig Ferguson. As we paced along upon the giddy footing of the hatches, we thought that Gloucester stumbled, and in falling struck me, who thought to stay him overboard into the thundering billows of the main. Groucho Marx. Lord, Lord, me thought, what pain it was to drown. <laughs> what dreadful noise of water in mine ears, what sights of ugly death within mine eyes. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. We thought I saw a thousand fearful wrecks. Ten thousand men which fishes gnawed upon. <laughs> Wait for it. 
Robin Williams. Wedges of gold, great anchors, heaps of pearl. Oh, oh. Inestimable stones, unvalued jewels, all scattered in the bottom of the sea. It was like Vegas. Bullwinkle. Some lay in dead men's skulls. And in those holes where eyes did once inhabit, there were crept, as if in scorn of eyes, reflecting gems, which wooed the slimy bottom of the deep and mocked the dead bones that lay scattered by. Paul Harvey. Had I such leisure in the time of death to gaze upon these secrets of the deep he thought I had. Robert Siegel. And often did I try to yield the ghost, but still the envious flood stuck in my soul and would not let it forth to find the empty, vast, and wandering air, uh, but smothered it within my panting bulk, which nearly burst to belch it in the sea. Fred Rogers. Awoke me not with such sore agony, no, no. <laughs> my dream was lengthened after life. Oh, then began the tempest to my soul. Hal 9000. Methought I crossed the melancholy flood <laughs> with that grim ferryman which poets write of into the kingdom of perpetual night. Wilfred Brimley. The first of there to greet my stranger soul was my great father-in-law, renowned at Warwick, who cried... Alec Baldwin. What scourge for perjury? Can this dark monarchy afford false Clarence? And then he vanished. Andy Griffith. Next came wandering by a shadow like an angel, with bright hair, dabbled in blood, who shrieked, Peter Laurie. Clarence is camp. False, fleeting, perjured Clarence. <laughs> oh, that stabbed me in the field by Tewksbury. Oh. Seize on him, furies. Take him into torment. Gilbert Gottfried. Without me thought a legion of foul fiends environed me and howling in my ears such hideous cries. George C. Scott. That with the very noise, I trembling waked and for season after could not but believe that I was in hell. William Shatner. Such terrible. Impression <laughs> made my dream. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll just leave you with this. One thing I've realized is that, you know, I carry all these voices in my head, these personalities, these beingnesses, if you will. This is something that anybody can do. You know, you can, you can, uh, I'm sure you can if you took a second right now. In fact, do this. Uh, indulge me, won't you? In your mind, listen in that iPod of your mind to someone you love, the voice of someone you love. Maybe they're laughing. Maybe they're saying something to you. Can you hear it in your head? Can you actually hear the voice? Many people can. If you can't, you can learn to do it. Uh, you just kind of record people in your mind. And it's nice. You know, you have all, all these recordings, like all these memories. They're, they're really full-bodied. And, of course, the people that you love have your voice in their mind, in the iPod of their mind. And it brings them happiness and makes them smile. Uh, it's been an honor to perform for you. And I look forward to the rest of the uh, uh, conference. And I will see you all around. Thanks a lot. <laughs>